Welcome to Fuel Your Mind, a web series dealing with all things diesel. On this episode, we talk about the basics of diesel fuel. So why does the United States have diesel fuel with such low lubricity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, basically, it started back in the 90s when they started reducing the sulfur level in diesel fuel. So in the early 90s, it went from 5,000 down to 500 parts per million. Mm -hmm. And then early 2000s, around 2006, uh, ultra low sulfur diesel fuel was introduced. And basically, as the sulfur level comes down in diesel fuel, so does the lubricity and the stability of the diesel fuel. I think I heard something about that or read something about uh, a lawsuit that's going on right now. So, so today there's a lawsuit between, uh, it's a class action lawsuit against General Motors because the fuel pumps don't have enough lubricity and they're shredding apart, causing catastrophic failure. Little shards of metal are going in because there's a lack of lubricity. Yeah. And that's due to the sulfur content not being there. So do other countries have the same problems with their diesel? It, it is a universal problem around the world. And there is something unique to US diesel fuel though that makes the kind of compounds a problem. So, so for example, overseas, using a wear scar as the index of how much lubricity is in the fuel, in Europe, the, the wear scar is 460. So, so a wear scar is the maximum amount of damage that could be done to the surface. That volume would be 460. In the United States, it's 520. So our spec is, you know, basically 30, 40% higher. We allow more damage to that scar area in the, in the category of lubricity. So that's where the big difference is. So there's specific testing for this. It's called an HFRR, high frequency reciprocating rig. And that's a ASTM test and all the diesel fuels will go through that. So when they put this test together or when they put the spec together in the United States, they didn't um, specify that you had to have that, that better level of lubricity, which is creating problems because a lot of the equipment that we buy today is, is engineered and made overseas. So when it comes here, it doesn't really work with our fuel. And that's what we try to design areas to fix that. That's one of the problems that we fix. So when the governmental regulations pulled the sulfur out of the diesel, were there any other issues that came up after that? Yeah, actually, we brought some samples today to kind of show you. This first one is uh, an example of bacteria growth. So what, what we're talking about is, a, is bacterial growth. Uh, they're microbes that grow. They live off of hydrocarbons, but they need moisture to be present. With ultra low sulfur fuel came more moisture in the fuel, which allowed for more microbial growth. Um, so it's just, it's just a problem that's more common today than it used to be. The, the other problem that we have is, is moisture. Because there is more water in it, and it does seem to be able to absorb more water, uh, we see a lot more water present in today's diesel fuel than there used to be before the sulfur was taken out. Yeah, and then this last one is asphaltines. Um, you know, basically asphaltines and biodiesel components have more of a tendency now to come out of solution because of the, the absence of the sulfur compounds. Mm -hmm. uh, sulfur acted to stabilize it and, and reduce oxidation. So what uh, some of our customers C is, you know, fuel filters plugging up more often because of the occurrence of asphaltines. So Bram, you know, when they took the sulfur out, it wasn't just removing the lubricity. It was also removing antioxidants and a stabilizing factor. The sulfur act as a stabilizer for other additives and things that went in there. So now as those drop out, that creates problems across the board as well as with the moisture and the microbes. Those are great examples. Thank you so much. I mean, there's so much. Is there anything else that a diesel truck owner has to worry about with diesel compared to gasoline. Yeah, one of the things about diesel fuel is it has wax in it. And in, in warm climates, it doesn't matter. But if you're in a cold climate, you have to treat your fuel to keep it from what we call gelling. So they're called anti-gels. When you don't treat the fuel, what will happen is it will turn, the wax will start to separate and coagulate and then block the filter. So anybody in a cold climate has to use what's called an anti-gel. Wow, that is a lot of stuff going on in your fuel tank. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of time today, but Kevin, thank you so yeah, much. Nice Chris, thank, you, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thankfully, there are solutions to all of these problems. Don't forget to send us your questions on the topics that you would like us to cover on future episodes. But for now, thank you for joining us on Fuel Your Mind. We'll see you next time.